Ah, uh, yes. Back in the office. Back in the office with my paper towels and my squirchy, squirchy clean stuff. And my walk around mask that the hotel people make sure that I always have. And my, my sanitizer's down there too. Let me see here. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, Craig. Craig is manipulating information again. Oh, how far is that going to get him? Guys, this is, this is wild. Like, I can't keep a plan together for 48 hours. All of my, all my big ideas just turn to stupid overnight. Every night. Um, I've got roughly three weeks left. Well, maybe a little more. But yeah, basically three weeks, three and a half weeks left in the country here in Vietnam. And normally that would not be a big deal. I could pay some cash, extend once, buy either one month or three. But right about now, who the hell knows now i am a known quantity to vietnam now i've been here long enough they can see on my passport i've been here so i'm not bringing any nasty in with me that i didn't have with me months ago but i'm not in charge of these folks i'm not in charge of their bureaucracy so anyway it's time to look for other options so here we are draw bridges are going up. A new drawbridge goes up every day, and uh, it, it just, it takes me at least a day and a half or two days just to react to that and to, to stop moping over another opportunity eliminated. That's the daddy here. Uh, and then start figuring out what else to do. Uh, Russia and Ukraine on the same day, uh, they coordinated that. They pulled up the drawbridge uh, a few days ago now, and that was a heartbreaker. So bye-bye Russia, bye-bye Ukraine, bye-bye all that stuff. Uh, the, the Georgia country, that's to the south of Azerbaijan, um, Americans have been getting one year visa-free entry, but of course now there's no entry. <laughs> they ain't taken no planes, and so that's out. Uh, Belarus hasn't said anything yet, but come on, man. Yeah, it's funny. I keep, I kept wondering that, uh, that cash bearing coronavirus refugees were going to start showing up from China. No, they're showing up from Europe. Don't you freaking love it? Uh, Cambodia pulled up drawbridge a couple days ago. That bums me out because, uh, there are some, I mean, Americans can get, uh, extendable, like pretty much indefinitely extendable visas there. And there are some nice little towns there uh, where I could hide out and even even work on some computer programs and stuff. But no, you can't even get in. I went down, this is a good one. I went down to the embassy yesterday and they had a, I'll put it on screen here, but they, uh, they had a little posting, you know, no, no visas for 30 days to people from the EU, Germany, USA, all this stuff. In, in a, I had read online in a news thing somewhere that, well, we're still trying to figure out what they really mean by this, but uh, if you haven't been to any of these danger places in 20 days, then it should be okay. Bullshit. I went to that, <laughs> I went over there, and like the metal gates closed, and there's this old lady behind the gate pointing to the, and she's pointing to the sign, no visa, no visa. And of course, I just stopped on the sidewalk there and calmly explained in a language she doesn't understand. The nuances of the of the situation and how you know you can see here that i haven't been to a, a, a coronavirus country no of course that's not what happened the bureaucracy ran with it and so ain't, ain't no going to cambodia i went to the lao embassy next door of course it'd be next door and uh, homeboy didn't even know what the rules were he didn't even know he didn't even know <laughs> what the rules were or what they were going to be tomorrow he was exasperated. He was laughing. I was laughing with him. We were laughing. All right. Let's see. What else we got? Uh, yeah, Philippines pulled up drawbridge, at least to Manila and to uh, Davao, Mindanao. I'm not interested in no Manila. Forget it. They're on. They've got like a curfew and stuff over there now. And the Davao city. Yep. They just they just shut down the airport basically. So that's out. And Vietnam isn't taking people either, like me. Now. They're not sending out the dogs looking for me, but the point is, 
I cannot leave the country and come back. There's this concept called a visa run. Have you heard of this? A visa run? It sounds kind of shady, doesn't it? But it's what, uh, you know, people, people come out here to this, this region of the world and they can be out here for years with only like one month or three month visas at a time because they just go to another country and start over. And they come back and start over. They call these visa runs. Thailand is especially notorious for this because you can never get in there for longer than a couple months at a time. And everyone's always taking the bus, as I did myself. Remember that? I, I, uh, there's special little bus rides. You go to the border with Myanmar. Myanmar. Walk across, stamp, stamp, pay some money, stamp, stamp, walk back, get back on the bus and come back in. That's called a visa run. But there's nowhere to visa run to. Oh, didn't think about that, did you, Craig? No, I did not. So once I exit Vietnam, it's forever. Might as well be anyway. Suck, suck, suck. Oh, yeah, and then the news this very morning. I wasn't even out of bed before my buddy, Special Agent David, let me know that uh, US and A is doing a level four travel advisory, which is basically nobody go nowhere unless you're really to be stuck out there. Now, I'm actually okay with that. Depends on what kind of stuck we're talking about. It's just like, you know, what is it, 12 years in Tibet where Brad Pitt gets stuck out there? <laughs> I don't know. But there's that. And, and what that means is that if this, if this escalates, if people, if everyone comes back to the States, that means I'll lose my ability to get back to the States because unless I rent my own damn airplane. You see what I'm saying? If I'm not part of a market, then... No one's going to check out a 747 just for me. So, yeah. So what are my best bad ideas left? Lifeboat Taiwan is doing excellently. I know I can come back home to the States and have no health insurance and no job and no social status. And all that, yeah, I could, I could do that. I could do that. I can go back to the States and be just a middle-aged loser with no home and a fancy bicycle. Uh, yeah, of course. And that may end up being the default, like the true default. But uh, I'm going to run on a couple things today, mentally anyway. Lifeboat Taiwan is doing very well. Lifeboat Taiwan is a high IQ country with a strong government and rules, and it is an island. It's a freaking island. That's red hot. And also, frankly, it's, um, they're very tight about their, about their uh, immigration situation at all times anyway. So they have a bunch of, bunch of uh, just jokers like me kind of hanging around, clean shaven or otherwise. Uh, Taiwan is, um, they got 100 cases there. You got to do a quarantine. They hand out government cell phones to everybody. They call you at random times, so the cell phone reports on where you are, GPS-wise. And, uh, and also, through my voice recognition, they can make sure that it's me talking. You know, they ask me, you know, I don't know whether it's a robot asking me what's the capital of Oklahoma or whatever, whatever it is. But uh, that's how they know what's up. And uh, normal tourist visas are 90 days, and you can get the kind that extends another 90 or so, and it's, that's, that's six months, and dude, come on, man. And they're a friendly country, and they're an ally, and all of that. Well, who knows? You know, maybe by the time I get down to the embassy today, they will have, you know, changed all of this. That's how ridiculous all this is. But that is, uh, our, my buddy Ray the Australian loved his time in Taiwan. And uh, if I have to be 14-day quarantine, you know, frankly... Airbnbs are going super butt cheap down there because uh, tourism's in the toilet. And I can just, what, like send out for delivery and get, get two weeks worth of loot and just edit my YouTube videos. Doesn't sound so terrible if you ask me. But once again, I'm going over, I'm, wa I'm walking down. I'm not taking no taxis now. I'm walking down to the embassy today and I'm going to ask them. All right, there's the totally loopy, which is go up in the China. Isn't that crazy? Uh, there's also... Well, also not written down here is applying for my Vietnam extension and seeing if I actually get it. Um, three months and who knows what's gonna, what life is going to be like. But the thing, th th this element here adds some extra, extra pressure. 
See, they're going to work out here, man. I'm telling you. Life goes on in Vietnam. Uh, yeah, like one more month and there may be no planes going to the States for a while. Which has a certain romance to it, unless it's you. So anyway, uh, I, I don't know. That's, that sounds kind of crazy going to China, but it would be sort of poetically perfect. Kind of, kind of biblical, really. You want biblical, though. South Africa. Now, I loved South Africa. 90 days in force, 90 days visa. Cheap, cheap, cheap. The RAND just went to the toilet. That's their money, the RAND. And uh, there's no cases in the Northern Cape. That's the, the deserty center of the country where I was. But this is, this is Africa in the middle of chaos. And I would, that'd be very educational. But you know everything is going ridiculous. That, that might be a little bit more ridiculous than I've, I'm here to bargain for. There'll be planes going back and forth to Taiwan long after there's planes going back and forth to ridiculous African chaos where I have to go through rings and rings of rioting black townships on my bicycle before I can even get to the embassy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. So, you know I really lost it if I go for that. Or I've learned something, some secrets. So, yeah. Yeah, unless, unless God talks to me. Um, I'm not really feeling any of these besides a possibility for Lifeboat Taiwan, where I can get my own apartment for the same money I'm spending right now. But in a high IQ country where they have effective quarantine measures, which means that when people see me, they're not afraid. That's the point. When people see me, they're not afraid of me because they, they, will, have, they will believe that I've done the right things. You can read online. Uh, they've, they've done, they're, they're exemplar right now for how they've handled coronavirus. It's good. Um, here's some good news, though. I, 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 I made videos about this but never posted them because the information around them kept getting thrown out by events. But uh, it, was on, it was on my favorite, my favorite YouTube fake news maybe four or five days ago that these, uh, these Frenchies with the participation of a university here in Vietnam. You can read it yourself. You can read the words yourself. Uh, worked out that hydrochloroquine, that's a malaria drug, hydrochloroquine, plus kind of a chaser of azithromycin, which is a uh, antibiotic just for kicks, you know. Hydrochloroquine plus azithromycin. They cured a whole bunch of people of coronavirus with this stuff. And you can go to www.covidtrial. See that? Obviously, you can read my writing, can't you? C-O-V-I-D-T-R-I-A-L dot I-O. They uh, posted their results. So, it's, let me turn around for this. This is very, very, very good news because these, these, these guys, um, they did, it was, it was like, 20-something and 20-something people in Marseille, France. Okay. Um, and the point is, I think they paid for it out of pocket. These guys have got some money. So they paid for it out of pocket, getting all this crap together. And, uh, and they did all the steps. And they, did all, they did all the things to make it like a real scientific study because they knew how to write, how to do it. They knew the concepts at work and how to how to write the papers such that you've actually checked the right boxes, but they did it without going through the institutions. That's the point. They did it off the books, man, but they did it actually, you know, like you're supposed to. So they broke the rules, man. Wildcat medical science. And uh, the point is, okay, of the 26 people they gave the treatment to, 20 of them got better and in, in a week, in a week. And uh, the point is, as for those six, one or two of them actually died along the way. So one or two of them died before the study was over. And the rest of them got transferred to different hospitals or they got released or something. Like, they, they basically, they couldn't keep their hands on them anymore. They weren't, you know, under the control. And so uh, they couldn't count them either way. That, or they didn't. So one or two people died. They died before the cure could work. Ha! Ah, but, uh, and the rest of them ended up losing them, you know? Because they, they went to different hospitals where they got let out. But the point is, um, that's really good. 
And I think they were taken after some markets being done in China. I can't read Chinese, and, but maybe they know someone who does. The point is, the word of this got out, the president's talking about it. And so it was, first it was on my YouTube fake news, then it was on Laura Ingram, that's a Fox News show for you guys on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> and then he, was, then he was on Tucker, talking about it, and the president watches Tucker, and so the president was talking about it. And now, it's, people are going, so that, that's it, it's out, right? And so all these different countries are doing, the, the, the World Health Organization is trying to put something together, organized, you know, their way, trying to ride herd on it, basically. But there's people all over the world are now doing this at various levels of um, scientific rigor. Uh, and that's really cool. So you got, them, you got them doing with Chinese people, Korean people, Russian people, Persian people, European people, you know, it, yeah, all, all these peoples are getting this because this, these two drugs are common. They're, they're available. They're out there in large amounts. Um, some guys were on the news this morning in the States talking about how they're already using it on the really desperately old folks who are really, really sick. And so uh, America's starting to run out because America doesn't have much of a malaria problem. Whereas out here, I, I bought my own for $25. I got enough to get sick twice. Twenty-five fucking dollars at the pharmacy. By the way, a pharmacy is really just a couple teenage girls on their cell phones messing around with a bunch of drugs behind them, and you ask them for what you want, and they just give it to you and they sell it to you. That's it. I'm sure there are controlled drugs in this country too, but not these. I mean, it's a tropical country, and you, you worried about malaria? Have some malaria pills. What the hell? It could be beer. It could be beer and bananas and Snickers bars. You know. So. I worry that Vietnam may run out fast, but I at least got enough for myself, and I, I sent the word to my friends. I went to the hotel, back to the hotel, and I tried to present through, you know, pantomime and translate and typing onto their desktop computer with my pen, you know, that, and I showed them that, oh, it was a Vietnamese institution. You'll see it yourself. It's just a short paper. You can see it yourself. Vietnamese were in on it, that French connection. See? He was like, oh, I see. Hmm. And so I showed him the, the boxes. I said, it cost me this much. He's like, oh, okay. And then I, I just said to my uh, translator, please tell the other people. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he went and gave me some cookies. So, great. So that, it could be fake news. It could be fake news. But screw it. I did it anyway. Um, let's see, what else did I get here? Some zinc. Get yourself some of that, too. Zinc was actually, it's weird. You know, people take, take zinc for like, you know, uh, when you get a cold and stuff, you know. And um, zinc was actually how a lot of this work started. People were doing zinc on some cell cultures with coronavirus in it. And uh, the zinc was helping, but apparently the zinc wasn't getting into the cells and what they were trying different to, to really do its thing and slow down the reproduction. That's what, it doesn't kill the virus, but it slows down the virus's reproduction. So it gives your body time to catch up with it, you know? And one of the things they tried to help the zinc get into the cells, the little ions, you know, was the chloroquine. There's hydroxy, oh, it's not hydro, sorry, it's hydroxychloroquine. Look, Craig, you retard. Um, hydroxy. C, hydroxychloroquine. Anyway, the, I don't know what the difference is. Like one's chloroquine and one's got hydroxy in it. <laughs> I don't really know. But uh, the point is, they use one of these to help the uh, the zinc get into the cells, and booyah! So the zinc did its job. Now people are wondering if people already have enough. Most folks already have enough zinc in them anyway. So you don't even. So now the focus isn't even about the zinc. It's about the hydroxychloroquine to help the zinc you got get in there and work. So it's funny how these things work out. But I got some zinc anyway, because what the hell? That was 20 bucks too. They spent much, just as much on the damn zinc as on all this other stuff. And then vitamin D, the word is D3. 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 Which apparently is also vitamin D in the colloquial. Why do they do that, guys? I don't know, but... Um, Vitamin D is uh, 
also allegedly really good for your lungs. Good for your lungs. I didn't know this, but you can get the coronavirus through your mouth or something. But it finds your lungs and it goes to work there. I didn't know that. I thought you had to go into your lungs to get your lungs. No, you can go into you some other way and then get to your lungs later. So anyway, and I got all this stuff. I'm taking all this. Well, no, I'm not taking these. I'm just stashing these with me. But the zinc and the vitamin D and the stuff, I'm, I'm taking those now. Uh, yeah. So... So, uh, you know, the wheels are turning, guys. The wheels are turning. And you know, like I said before, I, I, can't, I can't stress this enough that these guys, the hydrochloroquine and the zithromycin, they, were, they did it pretty much for real science-y, but they did it outside the institutions. And then they made up their own website and published. It's a text-only website, so the downloads are fast. I don't know where they hosted it. But the point is, uh, there are all these doctors now and all these authorities and all these different authority structures. That's important because the guys doing this work in Iran and in Russia and in China and in UK, USA, Anglo, Zio, you know, they answer to different people, right? They get their funding from different people. They get their status and their rec they get their recognition from different people, from different channels, Korea and China, you know. So, if this is for real, it cannot be suppressed. I know there's some people in Israel who are saying, oh, we're going to have a virus soon. Oh, no, no don't blow it. <laughs> so so they're, they're going outside. They're, they're going outside. They're, they're, uh, the internet is going to work. And so if any of this stuff is for real, it cannot be hidden. So in about a week, about a week, we're going to know a lot. And that could really, even if it takes forever to actually make more of this stuff, uh, the good news is people are going to start relaxing and not freaking out so much. It's good. <sighs> what a, man, what a freaking time, you know? Who would it? Anyway. And, uh, oh yeah, my 3D prints are almost done. So in just, uh, not, not too long, less than a week, I'll have all my crap done and assembled and perfected and painted and coated and jiggered and wiggered and I'll be uh, re packed up and ready to go some freaking where yeah so that's where I'm at I think yeah I hope you know I don't know, I'm taking the cell phone with me to the Taiwan Embassy. I'm going to come back from there. I'm going to have some, something new, probably disappointing. So I, I guarantee you some of this video right here is going to be out of date by tonight before sundown. But I'm going anyway. i got to chase the shit down. Okay. Turn question marks into periods. That's how we do it. What do we know? When can I know it? I'll see you. If you... Hours later. <sighs>that's correct that's correct you, how'd you guys know how'd you know that's right Taiwan stopped doing passport stopped doing visas yesterday drawbridges are going up everywhere in remarkably synchronized fashion no less what do you make of that I don't know by the way um By the way, uh, Thailand hasn't pulled up drawbridges yet. Oddly enough, I don't want to go to Thailand. Isn't that funny? I don't want to go. For one thing, all I can get is two months. Nowhere to visa run to. I can get an education visa, but oh, wait. 
They closed all the schools. Man. So, no smart ideas. At this moment, nothing. See you later. All right, hey, I got some food in me now. Here's today's, I don't know, upbeat, downbeat, middle beat cliffhanger, okay? <clears throat> and it's this. All, like, all these countries doing uh, drawbridge up at the same time, just about, same, almost the same day. Curiously coincides, does it not, with those Frenchies or whoever is working with the Frenchies or you know whatever uh, coming out with the uh, the what's it called the hydroxychloroquine plus uh, the the antibiotic treatment news. Curious, right? Coinky dinky, and so. Maybe, this is what I'll, I'll go to bed with tonight, is maybe they're pulling up drawbridge for like, I don't know, a month or so, just they can say, okay, nobody in, nobody out, we're cleaning up this stuff now. We're curing these people and getting this crap over with. Maybe, maybe, you know, so they don't want to, because they don't want to be behind when things get open again. Hmm, maybe they want to get the jump on it. Uh, maybe, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, and also, maybe right down here is exactly the place to be for that because this is where the malaria drugs are because this is where the malaria is. Huh? Now Thailand, Vietnam, especially or relatively organized countries, you know, with armed forces, and surely their armies have got stashes of this stuff. As opposed to in America, where we have no malaria and haven't forever. We did we did once, though, by the way. Uh, but, you know, USNA is running out of malaria stuff, but these people got plenty. Because I could buy some of my own, right? So interesting, right? Very very, very interesting. I mean, hell, maybe they pulled up drawbridges to keep people from, to keep Chinese from buying up all the local malaria stuff and trying to take it home, you know? Like they did with masks and, uh, and uh, respirators a couple months ago. I don't know. I'm making this up. But it's interesting. You know, in, in the big thick of things, it's so easy to miss timing coincidences of things that shouldn't have anything to do with each other. So let's, uh, you know, let's keep our eyes open on that. Shall we? Yeah. All right. Till then.